Today, we're gonna to talk about a couple of things that I did to be able to grow my channel from 1,000 subscribers to well over 170,000 subscribers in less than a year. Starting a YouTube channel today is super simple because the only thing that you have to do is to go onto YouTube and register a new account and then you're all set, you're ready to post your video. The hard part comes when you like wanna get the likes, you wanna get the views, you wanna get the comments, you wanna get the subscribers and everything that is involved with having a growing YouTube channel. And I remember when we were like two or 300 subscribers here on the channel and I was watching a lot of bigger YouTube channels and thinking to myself like, man, I wish I could grow my channel to something like that. And now we're here a couple of years later and we are well over 178,000 subscribers on this channel. When I first started posting onto this YouTube channel, I posted a lot of vlogs because I was really inspired by Casey Neistat. But what I realized like after a while was that I don't have the same interesting life as Casey has and I'm not living in New York. I'm living in Sweden, which is kind of boring and you know, I can't do those cool time lapses that he could. So after a while, I kind of realized that if I want to grow this YouTube channel, then I can keep posting vlogs because I mean like, who wants to join me shopping for groceries or going to work or something like that because like those are not interesting things unless you are a really interesting person or really good cinematographer so you can like capture the essence of grocery shopping or going to work and instead of keeping up making the vlogs and focusing on those i started to focus on creating searchable content for this channel. I remember that I was watching like a review back in the day and then I thought to myself like, you know what, I can do a video that's better than this. And then I did a video that was actually better than this in my opinion. <sighs> and then I posted it onto YouTube and then I thought to myself, you know what, this is gonna get way more views than the other one, but it actually didn't. I thought to myself like, why are the bigger YouTubers getting so many views on their videos, even though I can create the same kind of like production quality, but I barely get any views on my videos. And the reason for that is because of click-through rate and watch time. Because if your channel has like 100 subscribers, then it's gonna be really hard for you to get a video that gets thousands and thousands of hours of watch time. But if your channel has like 400,000 subscribers, it's gonna be way easier for you to get a video that gets thousands and thousands of watch time, watch hours, watch time hours. So basically what YouTube does is that if there's a video that's getting a lot of watch time, then it will promote that to a bunch of more people than if a video is not getting a lot of watch time. So when you are like starting out, trying to grow your channel, it's gonna be so hard for you to get the watch time that you need to actually get YouTube algorithm to start promoting your videos out to a bunch of people. And that is why it is super important that you try to do like searchable content within your field of expertise. And one of the first videos that actually gained a lot of views here on the channel is this video where I do a review about a zoom lens that I bought for one of my Sony cameras. And when I saw that that video started gaining more views than my vlogs, I started to do more lens reviews and more gear reviews and also more tutorials that people would actually search for. Because like, if you think about it, what we do when we're about to buy an expensive product or when we wanna learn something, at least in my case, you know, I go onto YouTube, I try to search for the product that I wanna buy or the thing that I wanna learn. And then I find a video that is covering the particular thing that I search for. And the good thing with searchable content is that there's gonna be thousands upon thousands different things that you can cover within your field of expertise. So for example, in my case, there's gonna be like tutorials that show people how to actually shoot b-rolls there's going to be tutorials on showing people how to edit there's going to be so many things that you can do that will provide value to your viewers so creating searchable content was definitely the biggest thing that made my channel actually start to grow and gain some traction get a lot more views than i usually had on my videos but even though you get a lot of views on your videos it's not going to be obvious that people will subscribe to your channel. So one thing that I highly recommend you to have within 
your videos like in the beginning and at the end is going to be to have a call out where you actually ask your audience to subscribe to your channel because doing a call to action is definitely going to make more people hit that subscribe button on your channel so if you haven't subscribed that'd be highly appreciated <laughs> Having a good title on your video is going to be crucial to make people actually click on your video and to make it be seen in the search results when people are searching for the video. So for example, when I was doing a review of camera lenses, I tried to like include as many keywords in the title as I possibly could. So when I was reviewing the 24mm G Master lens, it was like Sony 24mm G Master lens and then like a bar and then Sony full frame lens review. So in the title I included Sony two times to be able to make that the searchable like keyword of that video. I guess in a way you can say that I tried to like search engine optimize both my title and my description because like the first thing that you want to put in your description is going to be the exact same Thing as you're putting in the title because if you do that it's gonna be way easier for like Google and YouTube to actually show the viewer the best result because you've included so many keywords into both the title the description and the tags that Google will like prioritize that and show that to the people that are actually searching for those kind of videos that you do and when it comes to the tags it's actually really important that you don't skip those because those will actually help your video to end up in the right search results on YouTube. So try to find the most relevant tags that you possibly can. And in my case, I used TubeBuddy in the beginning to like find the most relevant tags for my videos. And that is something that I still use to this day to try to find the best tags that I can just include into my video. Because if you just skip the keywords and just paste Peter Lindgren, uh, Sony and uh, this video is awesome then that is not gonna help your video to like rank higher in the search results so try to like pay attention to the title description and the actual tags of the video I've talked about this before but paying attention to the YouTube analytics is something that you have to do if you actually want to grow your channel if you're not comfortable with using like the YouTube analytics then I highly recommend you to like start putting some time aside each and every day to go through the analytics and start like fiddling around with the different digits and buttons and whoa, everything that you can touch on within analytics because it will help you to get a better understanding on how your videos perform, how your channel performs and everything else that helps your channel to actually grow. Something that I started to pay attention to a whole lot during the summer of 2019 was the audience retention of my videos. Both the relative audience retention and the absolute audience retention. Because if your audience retention is not high enough then you have to do something differently in your videos to make sure that the viewers of your video is actually staying in your video for a longer time because the longer a person is actually watching your video the more YouTube is going to promote that video to a bunch of more people because like what YouTube ultimately wants is people stay here on the platform watching videos because that is how YouTube is making the money. So a couple of ways that I tried to like up my audience retention was that I tried to introduce a hook in my videos, you know, try to like make people actually want to stay and watch the video and see what I had to offer in the video. And when it comes to like doing reviews or talking about products, something that is super important to include is gonna be B-roll of the actual product that you're talking about. So say for example that I'm gonna talk about camera, more so my Sony a7R 3 then I wanna include some b-roll of said camera to show you what I'm actually talking about. And that is something that makes the video flow a little bit better and it doesn't feel as long and like dragged out. Another thing that you can do is like to like crop in and crop out on the actual like talking head shots to make it feel like it's a bit more camera angles than just one static like this. Okay, so when you got all of those things down and you know you are like really good at the analytics, you are really good at the titles, the search engine optimization, the keywords and all those things that we've talked about, the most important thing that you want to pay attention to is to have the highest possible quality that you can on your thumbnails. Thumbnails is probably going to be the thing that will make or break your video because if the thumbnail is not good enough 
then people will not click on that video. I mean, it's kind of the same as it was when I was younger, when you had to actually go to the store to rent a movie. And the only thing that you could judge the movie on was the cover of the actual movie. And if it looked cool, then you're like, okay, this looks cool. We're gonna take that. And if the cover was bad, then you didn't rent the movie because the cover was bad. And it's basically the same with YouTube. It's like thumbnails is super important. When I do my thumbnails, I try to spend as much time as I possibly can into making the thumbnail look intriguing or interesting or like cool or something like that so that I personally would click the video myself. And lately I've also tried to have like three or four different thumbnails so that if the CTR, we stand for click through rate, is not high enough, then I can just like switch out the thumbnail and see if that makes the video like perform better. Because if the thumbnail is not good enough, then there's not gonna be a lot of people that will click your video. Another thing that is really important to make people actually stay and watch your videos is gonna be the audio quality that you have on your videos because it's actually proved that people prefer good audio quality instead of good video quality. And I mean like if your audio is bad on your video, people will like cut right off. But if the audio is good and the video is bad, people will probably stay because they can actually hear what you're talking about with a loud and clear voice. And if you can combine the two so that you get good audio and good video, that is when you have like a great concept for getting people to actually stay on your channel. So I really hope that you like the tips that I gave you in this video and that you can apply them to your own channel. And uh, if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up because it's highly appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed, it's gonna be right here. So uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, oh, with that said, Peter from Sweden, out.